Hello, I'm Mr. X, Mentor of Mathematics, and this lesson is Trig 095, the distance formula in rectangular coordinates and the Pythagorean theorem. You need to master this business before embarking on a course in plain trigonometry. Before beginning a course in trigonometry, you should have learned the distance formula in Cartesian coordinates or rectangular coordinates, and you should have an appreciation that that distance formula is effectively the same as the Pythagorean relationship where the sum of the squares of the sides of a right triangle equal the square of the hypotenuse. That all sounds like a mouthful, but there's really not that much to it. What's important is that you understand it before you start taking a course called plane trigonometry. All right, we have our little familiar grid here. Here is the origin, x-axis, y-axis, and we want to find the distance from A to B. We want the length of the line segment that would go from A to B. We also want the length of the line segment that goes from C to D. These are two different problems. We want to find AB and we want to find CD. I'm going to do CD first. So what is the distance from point C to point D? Hopefully this distance formula looks familiar to you. You take the difference in the x values and square it. Take the difference in the y values, square that, add those together, and then take the square root. You say, boy, that sure is a lot of work. Well, yes and no. Let's say the distance we want to find is the distance from C to D. So I'm going to put a little CD, capital CD, next to my small case D. This D means distance. Capital D is this point. Do we know the coordinates of these points? That might be a good thing to have, huh? Let's do that first. All right, if we assume that each of these grid marks represents a unit, then the coordinates at point C are negative 7, negative 5. That's our ordered pair right here. And the coordinates at point D would be 8, 3. That's our ordered pair for this point. Now let's use the distance formula to find the distance from C to D. Well, let's put it into the formula. In fact, to keep things straight, Let's change our formula from 1's and 2's to C's and D's, because that's really what it means. See what we did here? It's just as if we called this point 1 and called this point 2. That's how we use that formula. Now we're ready. Oh, it looks like we have a negative 15 here. And here we have a negative 8. Of course, when we square these, we don't have to worry about the negative sign. You know what that's going to be? Well, it turns out that we have a Pythagorean triple. Turns out that whenever we have, I'm just make a quick sketch here, a right triangle with 8 and 15 for the sides, the hypotenuse will be 17. We call that a Pythagorean triple because 8 squared plus 15 squared equals 17 squared. While we write a Pythagorean triple sometimes with dashes, what this means is that. 8 squared plus 15 squared equals 17 squared. The numbers just work out. So our hypotenuse is 17, and that's our distance. Indeed, it's 17 units from C to D. Of course, we could have just looked at the lengths of the legs of our triangle and done Pythagorean and accomplished the same thing. I mean, when you think about it, the difference between x sub c and x sub d is the difference between this line and this line. This is where the x-coordinate of C resides. This is where the x-coordinate of D resides. Take the difference, we get 15. Absolute value is 15. We can't have a negative distance. Likewise, the difference in the y-values is 8. The distance from this line, y equals negative 5, to this line, y equals 3. Sure enough. This value, the difference in the x values, is this guy. 
And this guy, the difference in the y values, is this guy. So whether you look at the distance from C to D, or D to C, as being the distance formula or the Pythagorean theorem, it's basically the same process. Now I'm going to leave it to you to find the distance from A to B. So let's get those coordinates. I think you'll find the coordinates at A to be negative 2, comma 9. That's our ordered pair at point A. And in point B, we have negative 4, positive 2. And both in the second quadrant with a negative x and a positive y. So we need to change this now. I'll use the same convention here. We want the distance now from A to B. So in effect, we want the length of this purple line segment. How far is it from A to B? A to B, B to A, makes no difference the order in which we take these. If we reverse the order in these little differences, it still won't matter because when we square it, it's going to end up positive. If we reverse the order of a difference, we introduce a negative sign. But again, squaring it means it won't matter. It's going to end up positive anyway. So fill in the numbers, crank it out. Now, if you're not really good with subtracting negatives and messing around with minus signs, you can very easily make a mistake right here. Our formula says take x sub a and subtract from that x sub b. So this is actually a negative 2 minus a negative 4. A negative 2 minus a negative 4. Well, I don't write minus minus. Negative 2 minus a negative 4 is just negative 2 plus 4. And that's going to end up being 2. A little easier with ya minus yb, we have a 9 minus 2. And that's a 7. So, can you see what this is going to give us? Well, it's going to give us the square root of 53, as it turns out. Add the 4, the 2 squared, the 7 squared. 4 plus 49 is 53. That's an irrational number. And you should be able to tell that it's between 7 and 8. Here's the logic to that. 7 is the square root of 49. 8 is the square root of 64. 53 is between 49 and 64. In fact, it's probably a lot closer to 7 than it is to 8. Let's punch up a calculator and get a decimal approximation for radical 53. 7.2800. Or thereabouts. That's approximate. But this is exact. This is the exact answer. Square root of 53. The number that times itself gives us exactly 53. Do you see how easy this is with Pythagorean? 2 squared plus 7 squared equals radical 53 squared. You want to be comfortable with these issues before you start taking a course called Plane Trigonometry.